Good afternoon. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to thank all of the parents and friends of the future class of 2027 for joining us this afternoon. If there are any board members present, uh, if you could stand and wave so that we are here. Okay, I would also like to uh, recognize our superintendent, Dr. Clint Willard. Our activities director, Mr. Rick Zollner. And last but absolutely not least, I would like to recognize uh, Ms. Kathy Baker. Thank you and good afternoon. On behalf of the Pipestone Area School, I welcome you to our legacy commitment to graduation ceremony. The purpose of high school is to earn a diploma. But earning a diploma is more than just graduating. The diploma is a gateway that allows our young people to pursue interests and careers in their lives. There are many experiences our students have along the way that make earning the diploma a worthwhile journey. We are here today to officially celebrate our students in this journey that they are embarking upon. Today we have the privilege to hear the experiences of one of our seniors, Noah Gerhardt, and a parent and community and business leader and Pikestone Area Schools graduate, Mr. Justin Frickty. Their experiences reflect on the value of school and education. Please welcome to the stage one of our seniors, Mr. Noah Gearhart. Nelson Mandela once said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Now, I'm not going to tell you guys what to think about that quote, because then you just have my opinion. But I think you guys should all really think about what that quote means to you as you're going through high school. <coughs> Some of you, as you continue on to college maybe later, just think about that through your education. But I know it's your heart. I'm here to talk to you about my high school experience. I'm obviously a senior here at PAS. Some of you may know me as Big G, and I am part of the speech team and chess club here. And I possibly more famously am the number one fan of girls' tennis. I'm going to share with you a few things that are my advice to you guys as freshmen, and some things I maybe wish I had done a bit differently. So first, it's really critical that when you're choosing your electives, you take the ones that you actually have interest in. Because when I was a little bit younger, I tried to take you know, whatever elective sounded the easiest to me. The problem is those would be the classes I would get the absolute worst grades in because I had no level of caring for them. It was just, I'm gonna get through my day, this is gonna be an easy class. I did awful, but we get, you know, not get the homework done, wouldn't do what I was supposed to do because I didn't care. But when you take the classes you're interested in, you're going to get better grades and you're going to have more fun and you're also going to kind of figure out what you're interested in, what you want to maybe do after high school. Like right now I'm in civil engineering with Mr. Deathless and I thought that sounded really cool. Worst class I've ever taken. It's <laughs> awful, I hate it, but you know, it's just kind of, you gotta figure it out. And he's even said like, well, that's about as good as knowing you do want to go into civil engineering. <laughs> but just seriously consider that. You want to take classes that are interesting to you, not just whatever sounds easy. But then moving forward with trying to succeed in school, you need to, if you need help, Go to the teachers, you know, before or after school, send them an email and ask them for help because 
You guys probably don't know this yet, but teachers love it when you ask them for help. And it's going to help you to develop a relationship with your teachers. And they're going to think it's really cool, and they're going to see a lot of confidence that you took the initiative to ask them for help when you needed it. And it's going to obviously help you in your classes, as they're going to be able to give you an explanation that they can't just always give in front of the whole class because sometimes it's a very individualized explanation. And also, and this is where I really screwed up, right, is I did not make good decisions. And you need to make good decisions in high school because everything is going to just build off each other. So when it comes to like drinking, vaping, drugs, you can't just have got to stay away from that. I made that mistake when I was your age, and that really screwed me up. My grades suffered, everything suffered in my life, but the good thing is, if you go down that path, which I don't think you should, you can still turn it back around, and you have lots of time to. I did that between the end of my freshman year and now, and you know I'm doing good in school now. I don't have any issues with that, but you have to just make the right decisions. And when you're making those right decisions too, it's also the decisions with your relationships with other people. You have to respect your classmates. And if you do that, you're going to enjoy your high school experience a lot more. You're going to interact with people better and it's going to just help you out so much to have meaningful relationships, not just with the handful of people in your class that are like pretty cool, but with everybody in your class. That's the biggest thing that I think can really change your entire high school experience and the trajectory of your high school. And when we're looking at building relationships, I think one of the best ways to do that is going to be my next tip, which is get involved in the high school community here. There's so many different things you can do, different activities, different clubs. You know, you can go to sporting events, which are probably some of the highlights of my high school so far. But, you know, they sometimes it sucks when we lose, right? But we also tend to get closer with a lot of our classmates, even in the, especially in those tough losses and games. Like just going to events and being part of some sort of activity. I'm sure you guys can find something, even if it's not speech and chess club, which are obviously the coolest activities you can do here. But just seriously, when you're in something with people, like the only reason I know some of the people in this room right now are because of those activities. and. Some of them I like quite a bit. There's the one guy, he knows who he is. I'm looking right at him. <laughs> but it's, it's all good. We, just, you're going to build a lot more relationships when you're in those activities, and you're going to have a lot more fun. Which just brings me to my final tip, which is you have to enjoy high school, because all of a sudden, all the fun and games are gone. It's your senior year, and you think, this is almost over, I'm going to college or next year for some people I'm going in the workforce and that's scary where like this high school time, it's, you know, it's a lot of fun and you get to hang out with your friends all the time and it's just so much better. So like you gotta really just enjoy the time and I know it can be really stressful but when you're going through high school, until like, now as a senior, it's like, oh, you know, this is terrifying. I don't want to, I don't want to be done with high school. These are my friends. I want to still hang out with these people. I want to still come to these classes every day. It's all easy and fun and games, but it, it does come to an end. So really enjoy it while it lasts and have fun and be, be part of it, like I've been saying. So, to end this off, I'd like to say, you know, no matter if you're doing all of those things, or none of them, or a few of them, like, 
we can all strive to do better in school and be better. And high school is not just about your grades. It's not just about learning math, science, and history. It's also about learning a lot about yourself. And this self-discovery that happens through high school is so awesome. So just go forward every day trying to be your best self and do your best in school because everything else is kind of just going to follow after that. And I am obviously not perfect at all these things, otherwise I wouldn't even be able to talk about them probably. But thank you all. I'm very honored that I've gotten to give this speech for all of you, and I hope you'll seriously consider some of the things that I mentioned. Thank you, Noah, for those words. We appreciate those. Our next speaker is Mr. Justin Frickty. Mr. Frickty is a product expert at one of the region's top seed companies and a former Pipe Seminary Schools grad. So please help me welcome Mr. Frickty. Principal Huseman for the introduction. So as I said, I'm Justin Frickty, and uh, yeah, fortunately I got to graduate from Pipestone High School back in 2003. So uh, freshman, how many years ago was that? 20. 20. Sure. Kids, you you're ready to go? Was that you, Griffin? Did you say that? 20. Just, uh, yeah. Brilliant. Okay. It's great. So graduated in 2003. Went off to SDSU. Um, Kicked out of my league and got married uh, after graduating at SDSU. Started to form a family there, a uh, family of five, and, and one of them's in the freshman class. And so super proud of that as well. Uh, but now professionally, I work for a company called Millborn Seeds. So I'm going to draw some correlations between professionally what it's like, um, it, you know, hiring people uh, on a college in, in, in your professional life. What are things that really matter? And why is high school important? So we're making this dedication <coughs> meaningful and impactful, right? So we're going to twist it just a little bit. And uh, Noah did a really good job of leaning into some of the same points I want to talk about. So you said that perfect. So thank you. You did good. All right? So the three things that I'm going to tell you are three things to fail. Okay? We're going to twist it. Right? Most speakers are going to tell you about the keys to success, the tips for uh, succeeding. We're going to do just opposite. I'm going to tell you how to fail. I'm going to tell you how to not graduate. Okay? So if you're down that path, we're going to keep going down that path. Make sense? All right. So number one, do it all by yourself. Okay? Do it by yourself. Just do it all by yourself. Number two, don't put any effort. Right? Don't care. Don't have any effort. And number three, don't get involved. Those three things. Okay? So let's break it down just a little bit further. Right? So do it all by yourself. What does that mean? I guarantee you, once you start thinking that you've got a handle on things, and you've got control of things in your life, you're going to fall flat in your face. Right? You guys are freshmen now. You're getting smarter. You've had some life experiences. You're growing. You're getting stronger. You get back home to your parents, and you're kind of like, you know what? You've done a good job, parents. Thanks for raising me to this level, but I probably got it from here on out. Right? Freshmen are starting to think that way. You're thinking that way in class. You're like, you know what? This is geometry teacher. You've taught me a lot, but I don't know if I need to know any more about geometry. I probably got it from here. And I even see with coaches, right? Like football, for example. Mr. Boomgarden, right? Great football coach. But you get to a point where you're like, you know what? I, got, I went to some football uh, uh, camps this summer, and I watch a lot of NFL football, and I play a lot of Madden, so I pretty much know what to do, right? When we're young, we start to think that way, right? Not good thoughts. Guaranteed, you need other people around you. So, we're going to talk about team and what it means. So, to correlate that back professionally, uh, at Millborn, we hire about 50 college students, part-time college students, to work in the warehouse. And uh, they'll come in for two to four hours throughout the day. But hiring those students, um, 
we've got to make sure that they fit in culturally. Okay? And in order to fit in culturally, we've got to make sure that, that they want to be part of a team. Okay? They can't do it all by themselves. Me personally, when I started uh, back in 2010, about 13 years ago, we had a team of seven full-time uh, people working at Millwork. Now we've got about 50 people working there. And when we were building that team, uh, you started looking at yourself and figuring out what your weaknesses are, right? We don't, we don't know what we're all doing perfectly. We've got to understand within ourselves where our weaknesses are so that we can fill in those gaps, okay? I'm horrible at details. So the follow-up uh, as far as logistically shipping things, the follow-up as far as accounting goes, those are not my strengths, okay? But in order to build out a company and get to a place of success, you need to hire people and surround yourself with people that can fill in those weaknesses. So, what's your team, freshman? Right now, what's your team? Got any teams? Yeah, man, it's definitely getting out. Some are some sports team. Right now, your team is this class, right? Your classmates. Think of this as your team for the next three and a half years, right? Your classmates that you're friends with, some of your classmates you're not friends with, your teachers, your instructors, your coaches, that's your team, right? And you're going through the next three and a half years through high school together, right? So you're gonna have to work as a team to really succeed, okay? Uh, the other really cool part about being a team is understanding that you need to carry your weight, right? There's a book called QBQ, and uh, it was the first book I read when I started uh, work at Millborn Seeds, and actually anytime we hire somebody, we require them to read QBQ. It's, it's, it's uh, written by John G. Miller, and it's all about accountability, right? Taking uh, personal accountability for everything you do, going the extra mile for everything you do. So if I screw up on something, I'm gonna raise my hand and say, yeah, yeah, my bad, that was, that was my fault. I sold something that we were on of, and now I'm scrambling and I'm jeopardizing everybody else's role at work. That was my fault, right? You have to do that on your team too, right? So if you're doing a class project or you're on an athletic team or whatever it may be, owning up for what you screw up, but also giving gratitude to those around you is super important to being part of a good team. All right. So the other awesome part about being a team is you get to enjoy the success together and you get to celebrate that together. So as you guys do have successes, whether be in other activities or whether it be on a, a group class project that you're working on in social studies, you can celebrate those, those fun times together. Okay. So, to reiterate point number one, if you want to fail, if you don't want to get through high school in an enjoyable manner, just do it all by yourself. Okay. Point number two, don't put in the effort. Right? If you want to fail, don't put in the effort. My, uh, my absolute favorite sport is wrestling. Okay. Well, I love wrestling, I love watching it, I love watching college wrestling. Now, if I'm not cheering for STSU, I'm cheering for Penn State. Does everybody know who Penn State Wrestling is? They're coached by like the best college wrestler ever, Cale Sanderson, four-time national champion, undefeated. He's won 10 of the last 12 national championships for wrestling. Absolute great coach, great dude. Okay. But they have three core principles that they coach on at Penn State. Okay. Number one, show gratitude. It means be thankful, be grateful for what you got. Number two, know your goals. And number three, exert maximum effort. And that's the one we're gonna focus on here still, okay? So high school education, it's all about effort. Even Noah was alluding to this, right? You just gotta try, right? Effort is all about going and pushing through things that are just a little bit difficult. So if it's a homework assignment, you've got to try just a little bit harder on it, you've got to spend just a little bit more time on it, you've got to put the effort for it, okay? If it's uh, high school activities, the effort goes so far with high school activities. Right now, I, everybody in the southwest corner of the state is pretty level, in my opinion, as far as quality of athletics, um, even coaching, whether it's athletics, whether it's an FFA chapter, whether it's a, a, a band. The effort that you put in to just get a little bit better is what makes a team great, okay? And that means going to the weight room and lifting weights if you're going to get stronger. It means practicing your flute for just an hour longer if you're going to be better at marching band. It means giving another set of oral reasons if you're on the FFA Live Division team, right? Doing those extra things to get just a little bit better. 
is what's going to separate you apart. All right. So what does that mean as an employer? So I mentioned that uh, we're in this really big growth phase right now at Millborn Seeds, and we just launched a national brand called Innovo Seeds. And so we're building out this um, sales account manager team to, to go into the upper Midwest. And so we've had about, honestly, probably 50 to 60 applicants for these positions. And the first thing we're looking at is, how did they, how did they really push through in hard times, right? What are those measurements that we can look on the resume and say, oh yeah, that guy's, that guy's gonna work here. He's gonna try when things get hard. Get, things get hard. So the first things you're gonna look at is GPA, right? If you've ever built a resume, you have to put your GPA on. And whether you have a, a 3.0 or a 4.0, either one of them is gonna show you that you gave some effort, right? As long as it's not a 2.0 below average, you probably put in some effort. So we're looking at GPA. The other things are like, what did you win at? Like, what were you a part of? You no know, one talked about all the activities that you could be involved in. Did you win any chess team? Right? Were you competitive on your football team? Were you, were you a captain? Were you a leader in the marching band? What things did you get involved in that you won at? Like you put extra effort in. Because it, 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 in high school, things are going to get tough. I guarantee you, right? Relationships get tricky. Activities get tricky. School gets hard. Putting the effort to get through those hard times is going to translate after high school into college and then professionally in your work environment. So, those are the things you need to do to make sure that we have effort moving forward. And it's going to matter professionally down the road too. Third thing, don't get involved, right? No, we talked a lot about this and how it really does form your high school. Don't get involved if you want to, if you want to fail. If you want to succeed, if you want these next three and a half years to be just a blast, start something. Get involved in something, okay? Show yourself something new. Find something you like or you dislike. dislike. Um, I think when you, when you look at this, you know, from my point of view, why does it really matter that at a high school level you're involved? But I think first and foremost, when you just think about it, at a very high level, like, Human beings, we like a sense of community. Surrounding yourself with people with the same goals, the same lives, same passions as yourself. And with that community, you start to build this network, right? And professionally, you have to have a network to rely on, to lean back on, right? Even to do the simplest things. I think back uh, of, of, of my network right now, and I think back to, uh, we moved back to Pipestone in uh, 2012. I had to build a house, had to have a place to live. So you start calling people within your network. Electrician, right? Plumber. I mean, electrician, London. Your dad and I were wrestling teammates together, right? He was in my network because we're involved that way, right? Luca, your dad and I were involved together with sports and athletics and, and your uncle Joel. And so that connection starts to get into your network, okay? Our, our veterinarian was a great friend of mine and uh, a football teammate of mine, Dr. Vanderpool. Like, those people that you have now in your life, that you build relationships with, start to build that network. Even in college now, I think about uh, the customers that I work with. My very best customer started Iowa Cover Crops um, about eight years ago. And him and I were on a livestock eval team and meat judging team at SDSU. And we gained a relationship there, we gained some trust together, and now he's got a multi-million dollar seat business that he and his family run. It's all about those things that you get involved with to build those relationships with and have a network. Yeah. So, it doesn't matter what you get involved in. Find your passion, just like Noah talked about. Find that passion that you're interested in so you have that network to start to rely on later in life. So to reiterate that, I want to make sure you do understand you only have three and a half years of this high school left, right? So today you're dedicating, dedicating that movement to get to your, your senior year and capture a diploma at the end of that, but really do take advantage of it. It's only three and a half years, okay? So create your team and become selfless, get involved in all the possibilities and activities, and make sure you give maximum effort. Thanks. Thank you. Those are some good words uh, to take all the way throughout your high school career. Uh, we will have uh, the presentation of diplomas by Mr. Glenn Willard 
and Mr. Scott Boomgarden. Uh, parents and students, check out uh, this cap and gown here on the stage. I want to share that students can strive for graduation honors based on their overall grade point average all the way throughout high school. The gold cords here, they show um, a summa cum laude, which is with highest distinction. Uh, and that would be a 4.0 grade point average. The silver cords there is for magna cum laude, and that is with great distinction, and that is a 3.75 through 3.99 grade point average. And the purple cords are cum laude, with this, which means with distinction, which is 3.5 to 3.74. Students can also earn a green and blue attendance cord to be worn at graduation for missing less than eight days each of their junior and senior year. Members of the class of 2027, you have heard some great comments and insight today. I will leave you with this. This is your opportunity to create your legacy. A legacy is something transmitted by or received from a predecessor or from the past. I urge you to create this legacy as a class, as the class of 2027. The three P's and the three L's. Practice, persistence, and passion, like the arrow way says. When times are challenging, what will your legacy look like? Things here today are reminders of what you are and what you can become. You, you will receive the commitment to graduation certificates as a symbol of your attitude, and when you sign the banner, you will show your will to win, attitude, and dedication regarding school and involvement as a school. The line of commitment you create shows your commitment as a class and to each other. Okay. First row, would you please stand up to receive your diplomas? <laughs> Joanna Lise Alvarez. Melanie Areno Campos. Brian Ayala, Zahir Bashir, Jasmine Boki, Alaren Brinkmeyer, Nicholas Bruns. Amelia Booker. Colin Booker. Addison Burke. Kaylin Burmeister. Isabella Burnett. <coughs> Dulce Campos. Lelaney Candelari Keylanton. Ashley Casa Moreno. Cheyenne Kaler.
Delilah Cook. Wyatt Corcoran. Ethan Davis. Violet Doherty. Kesa Dowdy. Brady Dunn. Brooke Eink. Bradley Emery. Tyson Evans. Kaylin Fiddler. Mason Fricky. Charlotte George. Hayden Gorder. David Guadron Gomez. Avery Gutierrez. Abigail Hawk. Johan Hernandez. Genesis Herrera Alvarado. Yeah. Amelia Homenberg. JC Isle. Kingston Hunt. Jocelyn Coppin. Kate Kaur. Janasia Larkins. Miles Lemke. Cheyenne Morris. Valencia Murphy. Marcus Nitz. Quinton Nolder. Sophie Oliver. London Olson. Nicholas Olson. Abigail Ostermeyer. David Perez Gonzalez. Brian Perez Gonzalez. Joshua Funt.
Maria Pilar Lopez. Elijah Prow. Madison Punt. Luca Quist. Briley Reek. Gavin Rowden. Bryn Schultz. Autumn Sig. Emerson Smith. Griffin Smith. Josephus Smith. Alyssa Stoic. Americ Subandi. Matthew Swenson. Santino Tebow. Laura Van Elperen. Harley Vaughn. Alexia Vivancolia. Eva Zalea Rojas. I am so sorry. Eva Witty. I take full responsibility for that. It was on the wrong line. Gave you a new last name there. Luis Fernando Zaleja Rojas. There we go. Carlos Zapeta Asornio. And Zane Zalman. Class of 2027, you are now committed to create your own legacy. That means commitment, dedication, graduation by seeing your education through until graduation day. I am proud to present to you the class of 2027. I'd like to thank all the students, faculty, parents and staff for their participation in this legacy program. 
Students, when the music begins, you are dismissed beginning with the back row. Parents and visitors, please wait to exit until the class of 2027 fully exits the auditorium. And then please join us in the commons for some refreshments. 